Okay, so this is six one polygon. A polygon is a many sided figure made up of straight line segments that don't intersect. So when we're looking at <clears throat> shapes A, B, C, D, and E, shape A is a polygon. It has its many sided figure, it's closed, and it has straight line segments that don't intersect. B is a polygon. It is a closed figure with min, um, many sides, straight line segments that don't intersect. C is a polygon, closed figure with straight lines. Lines don't intersect. D is not a polygon because of this rounded side on the top. And E is not a polygon because it has intersecting lines right here in the middle. Both D and E are closed figures but because of the curved line and because of that intersection, they get disqualified. A convex line set is a convex polygon has no line that contains a side of the polygon that goes through the interior of itself. So I think of convex, if you want the pictures, it's the picture from B and the picture from C. Concave it is not convex. So when you're thinking of concave, it's the opposite of convex. I think of concave as con means width and cave is a cave. So if you were out in the wilderness, this is like the side of a cliff and you could go right into the cave and find shelter. Hopefully the bear doesn't live in there and it's going to eat you, um, but that you can spend a nice warm night, make a little campfire. I can draw the fire, I just can't draw a pillow in the blanket. So a concave means it has a, a, like an inny belly button instead of an outy belly button. So when we're looking at example two, is a concave or convex. It actually has two caves, so it's Double concave. Kidding, there's no such thing as concave. Um, and we look at B. B is a pentagon and it has no little divots or interior sides that um, go in. So he is convex. I'm going to pause for this. Okay, so let's take a moment and talk about the types of polygons. A three-sided polygon is a triangle. Four-sided is quadrilateral. Five-sided is a pentagon. Six-sided is a hexagon. Seven-sided has two names. It's heptagon or septagon. Eight-sided is an octagon. Nine-sided is a nonagon or an enneagon. Ten is a decagon, 12 is a do decagon, and n is a n-gon. Like, after, when it gets big, you can just say 99-a-gon, 111-a-gon. We just start cheating right, right when it gets big. Alright, so equilateral means all sides are equal. Equiangular means all angles are equal. And regular is a combination of the two items. It's all sides and all angles are equal. So when we look at example three, we're going to say whether if it's an equilateral, equiangular, regular, or none. So the first one has all sides congruent. Do we have any information about the angles? No, so we can't say that it's equiangular or regular. All we can say that is that it's equilateral. Alright, our second figure, we have congruent marks on all of our sides. 
and congruent marks on all of our angles. So this guy gets to be regular. I guess technically he is also equiangular and equilateral. The third figure it is neither equilateral or equilangular, so he gets to be poor none. Sadly. He wants to be a part of oh, okay. uh, And then the shape on the end, we see that the we have congruent sides on the left and the right, and congruent on the top and the bottom. That makes it a pair of maybe a parallelogram. Um, but it doesn't mean it's equal angular, and it doesn't mean it's equilateral. So it is also not. I just feel bad because for a little shape, all I want to do is be part of the game. It's not the right shape. All uh right. -huh. So we're going to talk about diagonals. Who is my other guinea? No, it was guinea. Jesse. Jesse, were you going to pull diagonal for me? Okay, go ahead. So a diagonal, just put it in a place where it doesn't, like in the blues. There we go. Connect two non-adjacent sides. So a diagonal goes through the center from one side to the other, non-adjacent side. So theorem 6.1 says the sum of all the interior angles is different for each, depending upon how many sides you have. So you take the number of sides, n, you subtract 2. So if it, let's think about this for a triangle. If I have 3, I minus 2, and then I multiply that by 180, what do we get? 180. So are the sum of the interior angles in a triangle 180? Yes, and if you want me to go through the proof about it, too bad, I recorded it, you have to watch it on YouTube. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because we got a life. Okay, so we're going to use this formula to find the measure of angle Q and the measure of angle R. So all four of these angles inside this quadrilateral um, is going to sum, so the sum of all the interior angles is going to be equal to however many sides I have, which I have four. I'm going to subtract two because that's the formula. And I'm going to times that by 180. So let's combine like terms. Let's get this uh, easy to solve. 180, uh, sorry, 80 plus 70 is 150. X plus 2X is 3X. 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 times 180 is 360, and that's for all quadrilaterals. The angles inside of every quadrilateral are going to add up to be 360, and I remember that because it's double the triangle. So we subtract 150 from both sides, and we get 3x is equal to 210. If 3x is equal to 210, then 1x is equal to 70. And that happens to be the measure of angle Q. I double that to get the measure of angle R. And we've answered the question. All right, so example five. You guys do not have a picture of a heptagon, so you will you get to take this opportunity to draw your own heptagon. It'll be super fun. 
what I do is I kind of start with a little roof shape and then I just kind of give a little obtuse angle and then when I realize I'm down to one side wherever I'm at I just connect it to where I started because we're not making a regular hexagon we're just making a hexagon so we want the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon that's how many sides guys seven Heptagon has seven sides, so you guys are going to draw a seven-sided figure. The interior angles, when I add them all together, that's all these guys, it's going to be equal to 7 minus 2 times 180, or 5 times 180 or 900 and if you want to put units on that that's degrees I just did um, the zero carries down five times eight is 40 put the zero down from the 40 five times one is five plus the four from the 40 is nine 900 mental math real lines okay so let me show you if you were to take the side of your hexagon and extend it beyond the corner like we're going to do here the angle created by the side of your hexagon and the extended line is an exterior angle so go ahead and as best as you can sketch a straight line we're going to extend each of our sides so we can see where the exterior angles are going to be. So we're extending each of these lines. So we can see visually what angles we're adding together. So if we're an exterior angle, we are these guys here. So it makes like a little pinwheel and then the angle from the outside. Now I have, I have a little food for thought for you guys. Um, and I'm gonna dash line it so I can just get your brains thinking on it. If I were to extend the other way, so say we did it like right here, like right here, or this way. Is the angle created by extending the other side different than the one we originally drew? I'm going to erase these green marks here in just a moment. So if you look, if I extended these green lines instead of the red ones, what type of angles are created if I extended that green line out? So it's the blue angle here that's congruent to the other blue angle. So it doesn't matter which way you draw your exterior angle, could it, you, but you're only extending one and you're only counting one of those exteriors. <laughs> there is, I'm going to erase that. I just want to bring that up so that you guys can see it doesn't matter which one the exterior angle is created, and that's the one we're adding. Okay. If we are a regular hexagon, then all of our angles are, have equal measure. And that, that is for exterior angles as well. So I'm going to add up, so say that this is angle A. I'm going to add up all these angle A's. And it's a, a hexagon, so there's six of them. 
You guys do not have to write this down. This is just demonstration purpose only. So there's six of them. When we add them together, it's equal to 360. What is an easier way to write A plus A plus A plus A plus A plus A six times? 6A. So we're going to go ahead and write 6 times our angle is equal to 360. So you can cut out this middleman and just go 6 times your angle equals 360. And if that's the case, then A is equal to 60 degrees. Now here's a fun thing to think about. If A is 60 degrees, What is my interior angle? What do you think, Nick? 120. Oh, isn't that fun? Good times, guys. Good times. 